1968 was the year that nearly broke America. Division, racial tension, protests, riots and chaos caused anguish that reached across the pond. It was this pain of a nation in turmoil that inspired one of the most hopeful songs ever written. It's pretty much a call to spiritual arms. Anyone who's ever lived knows what it is to have broken wings and sunken eyes. But even with the backdrop of a deadened night, McCartney and Lennon's Blackbird shows us that no matter how bad things get, we can take what we have, we can learn, we can sing, and above all, we can be free. In one of the most enduring creative partnerships on earth, Lennon and McCartney healed the world through much of their music and showed us that it's possible to protest in a way that's peaceful, stylish, and may even make you want to dance. Take these broken wings, learn to fly, learn to learn all your... In today's Masters episode, we're paying tribute to John Lennon. It's moment to be a free moment to be free. A black bird singing in the dead all night. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching and welcome back to the Masters series. Today we're going to take a look at John Lennon. Now, I was supposed to save John Lennon for after the election. I thought in the lead up to the American election, it would be really good to feature great Americans, you know, to celebrate the country. But it was really interesting. On the weekend, I was listening to the song Blackbird and something in me got me to Google search the history of that song. And as I was studying up and reading about that song, I realized, wow, we've really got to feature this guy a lot sooner. In fact, he's perfect to speak about right now in the lead up to this election. And I'm going to talk you through why. We're going to talk about 1968 and how that was a really difficult year for America. And we're also going to talk about uh, John Lennon because, you know, he was such an amazing man at that time. He protested um, in a very peaceful and stylish way. He made a documentary with his girlfriend at the time, uh, Yoko Ono, you know, they, they protested just, I think, um, from a couple of hotels. They were just in bed, you know, and I'll put pictures of all these things as I speak so you can see what I'm talking about. But what an amazing man. So I thought we've got to feature him now. I've written everything down, all my research down, so I'll just read out what I've got here as I like to do because there's a lot of fine detail. So let's get straight into it. So before we take a look at the creative partnership between Lennon and McCartney, let's take a look at what was happening in America in 1968 and 1969. From what I see, the first thing to cause mass protests was the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in April of 1968. The next was Robert F. Kennedy's assassination in June that year. Young people everywhere were protesting the Vietnam War. Many of them were drafted to go, their lives literally on the line. In November of that year, a divided Democratic Party unfortunately lost to Richard Nixon, a real turning point in the history of the United States, as the Republicans were to go on to win four of the next five elections. In addition to racial tensions and the protests against war, there was a pandemic. I'll put a picture on the screen of that now. So what was going on astrologically? Well, they had a similar configuration of stars to what we have in our skies now. From October 1968 to Feb 1969, they had Jupiter, Ketu and Pluto clustered closely together in Virgo, all transiting over the United States' natal Saturn. Plus, Saturn was transiting in Pisces, opposite the action of that cluster. 
This concerning cluster was happening in earth sign Virgo. So note the key there it, that it's an earth sign. Okay, so let's compare this to what we have today. The usual suspects, Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto and Ketu were all together at the height of our recent pandemic. Currently we have Saturn, Jupiter and Pluto in fellow earth sign Capricorn for the upcoming election. Look at that, earth sign Capricorn. Jupiter debilitated in Capricorn is making things especially tough this time round. However, the similarities are there between this time and 1968-1969. What lesson can we take from that time? Well, there are many, but for a start, the mercurial pen-pushing leaders of the late 60s who ordered war from behind desks could have done with listening to their people, many of whom were quoting Mahatma Gandhi, people like Martin Luther King and John Lennon. Right, so now we've come to John Lennon. Let's take a look at his chart. It was important to provide some context to Lennon in terms of the times because it helps explain his greatness. You see, Lennon wasn't just a musician. He was also an activist, ready to lend his fame to causes that needed it. Mars-Rahu conjunction offers, often indicates a rebel who's unafraid to pick fights, who might even be energized by them. Whereas Mars Ketu indicates a person skilled at battle, perhaps a more sensible person who's wise enough to save themselves from the, for the 1% of battles that really count. Rahu's son in the seventh house gave John a taste for fame, and these two conjunct with Mars, Lord of the Second, especially seated in Virgo, produced something of a healer. A leader who could fight and a leader who could heal. No doubt these talents and gifts were aided by Ketu in Pisces, denoting many incarnations of skill and completion in all areas of life. What else is denoted by the seventh house? Partnerships, and his partnership with his dear friend Paul McCartney, whom he later said was like his brother, was watched by the world at large in awe. Let's take a look at the two together. Their Rahu Ketu axes really fascinate me. They are virtually the same and yet run in opposite directions. Paul's destiny clearly lies with the Lord of Rahu, with the sun, which is seated in the 10th house. Paul comes from the hard work of Aquarius and is meant to relax like a king this time around. Whereas John's Rahu Ketu axis is somewhat opposite. He came from all that is to work, to serve, on this earth plane. Their destinies merged just as John started his Rahu Dasha and just as Paul started his Venus Dasha, both destined to give of their talents to the masses for a glorious 10 year period of time. I have a feeling that each learned a great deal from the other due to their opposing Rahu Ketu axes, each needing a little something of the other, a bit like one of those yin yang symbols. What else can be said about this partnership astrologically? Well, it was a true meeting of minds. In both D1 charts and D9 charts, Paul and John had their moons in the exact same houses. Incredible. Norman Deutsch, author of The Brain's Way of Healing, notes that when musicians are really getting in the groove, they create one giant meta mind shared by every band member. It's how improvisation happens, how one starts a riff and the other picks up on it intuitively, how one stops playing and the other pipes up. With these two, they came astrologically equipped to do just this. One shared musical mind was written in the stars. So where is the music in their charts? I'll light up the houses in the diagrams. I believe it's earth plus air plus a bit of water. So John, air house seventh plus earth sign Virgo. Air house 11th plus earth sign Capricorn. John's touch of water, Mercury in a water house. Now Paul, earth house sixth plus air sign Aquarius. Air house 11th plus water sign Cancer. And another touch of water down in the eighth, just like John, 
where Venus has access to more air next door. Paul has more water overall, which I believe makes his voice sweeter. He also has his moon in Ashlesha Nakshatra, famous for producing good musicians. Music is made by the elements. Beating a drum only requires earth plus air, right? So that's earth and air. Whereas a flute is earth plus air and there's always condensation that lines its interior. That's water, right? And you think about it, your voice pipe is the same. It's even called a pipe, right? It's earth, air, and it's moist so that you can sing. I believe it's water that sweetens the sound. As with any set of charts, there's always so much more to say, but I just thought I could feel John in the background somewhere saying, put me next so I can send some love to America and tell them it's gonna be all right. From all the quotes I read by him in my research today, this one felt most apt for the times that we're in right now. He said, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. So I hope you enjoyed my overview of John Lennon. These are starting to get a bit longer. This is 10 minutes. That's okay. We needed to spend a bit more time because we needed to look at you know, 1968 and 1969. And I didn't really get to mention in my notes the fact that um, John made that documentary with Yoko, the, the bed piece thing or, or whatever that was. I'll try and find a picture for you. But I mean, he did that, I think, in March 69. So you can see that that was really, that was a really tough time for the United States. So I hope this was a good case study to do. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I always love hearing from you and I look forward to seeing you next time.